everyone. I hope this finds each of you so very well. I'm speaking to you from my studio in West Orange, New Jersey. Absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to interview Dr. Marnie Hill Bartarero, who is an award-winning educator, a speaker, and the author of an inspirational book of spiritual miracles titled, God Came to My Garage Sale. Marnie will be speaking to us from Fredericksted, Virgin Islands. Marnie earned her doctorate in education and completed her postdoctoral studies at Harvard after a successful and rewarding 35 years career as a high school special education teacher with 12 years as a university adjunct professor. Her critically acclaimed spiritual fiction, God Came to My Garage Sale, an award-winning finalist in the 2020 Best Book Award sponsored by the American Book Fest, tells the story of a questioning atheist woman who experiences numerous spiritually transformative encounters. In addition to her speaking engagements and various writing endeavors on embracing spirituality after surviving domestic violence, narcissistic abuse, and parental alienation, Marnie is a contributing author to numerous best-selling anthology books. I'm eager to ask Marnie how she became aware of the universe's signs and synchronicities, what were the spiritually transformative experiences that brought about her awakening, and the way she survived domestic abuse and parental alienation by embracing spirituality. Her story is an inspiring story of grief and rebirth. And since many experiences in my own life sync up with Marnie's, I have absolutely no doubt that this is going to be an enlightening, healing interview for all of us. Hi, Marnie. A warm, Hi. heartfelt welcome to Grief and Rebirth podcast. Well, thank you, Irene. Thank you for having me here. It's truly my pleasure. Let's begin our interview with this question. Please tell us all about your early childhood leading to your teen years. Well, let's see. I was I, I was born in Miami, Florida, and then. Hey, by family, the way, me too. I was born you? in Miami. Oh my gosh! I, I was born in New Jersey, but I grew up in Miami, Florida. Okay, and I was born in Miami, but I grew up in Lake Forest, Illinois. So I was <laughs> in the suburbs of um, of Illinois. Um, I um, I grew up uh, with really free spirited parents. Um, I was very independent. And um, we weren't micromanaged like a lot of kids are these days, it seems. Um, but I definitely um, was impacted by my parents' very, very bitter divorce. And, um, and How old you know, you? really, excuse me? How old were you? Um, you know, I don't even know exactly. I think um, there were a lot of things that happened when I was younger um, leading up to this, I think it was probably around junior high, high school time. What a great age for that to be happening. Yeah, before. it was really, it was really tough. But I, um, you know, there, I'm starting now, uh, many, many years later, I'm, I'm almost 60 years old. I'm starting to put the pieces of the puzzle of all of that together, realizing that there probably was intergenerational abuse, domestic violence, um, more from my dad to my mom, um, that it, I'm starting to understand a little bit more of why I chose an abusive partner, um, at least first time around. I and, had the same story. Um, yes. Right, right. It's very similar, but it, it does. It's un, unbelievable how it takes years to unpack everything and, and, put the pieces of the puzzle together. But I grew up without much exposure to, well, no exposure really to religion and or, or spirituality. Definitely an appreciation for nature and humanity and equality and goodness and a love of learning. Um, so I had so many very positive things that I took from my childhood as well. Um, but the, the negative things, it seems, um, you know, my response to them was just to really forge ahead and, and survive and, hey, I'm going to make it on my own and, um, 
and that's kind of what I did. So that was my growing up um in you said up to the teen years oh, so. your teen, and then to your teen, through your teen years and that's when you had the story but you also became aware of the universe's signs and synchronicities so please share some of your own spiritually transformative experiences and then you also brought about an awakening for you didn't they yeah definitely you know when i was in college i always knew in my heart and soul there had to be more to this earth and so i was seeking out organized religion at that time. I was really believing that there's just too many miracles, just even in our bodies alone, um, that that it, that it just can't be chance or something like that. So, um, but I, I went along and then after I got married, um, I was involved in the church um, and I even became a lector where I was- Did you meet him through the church? Excuse me? Did you meet him through the church? My ex-husband? No, no, I met him um, in graduate school. We were both um, getting our master's degree in education. Um, but, you know, and he is someone who always touted, you know, I am a, you know, a, a devout Catholic, yet he's someone that never really went to church or never practiced or, you know, um, but it was, it was more for show, I think, than anything else or tradition, that type of thing. I don't know. I can't really speak for someone else, but um, but I I was very interested and and researched that myself. But it wasn't until after um, leaving my marriage, which I realize now that it was abusive. I had red flags for years and years and years. You know, a lot of cognitive dissonance, a lot of questioning, a lot of like things that just didn't make sense. Right. Um, a lot of definitely manipulation of money and just, you know, I, I just knew he was up to no good with a lot of things, but I just kind of ignored it so I could live my life, raise my family. I just always thought, you know, well, I made a commitment. I'm going to honor that, that type of thing. Um, but, you know, you do get busy in your life working full time. And, you know, when you're in an abusive situation, you end up kind of doing almost everything like that. That person Absolutely. kind of is out of the picture a lot. And you're just kind of, you know, taking care of of the kids and 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 so like an autopilot. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. So but it wasn't until, you know, I definitely had a defining moment where. I knew I had to escape and I had to escape fast. I mean, I didn't do any of the planning that you're supposed to do to be able to kind of be able to be on your feet and stuff. I just knew I needed to get out. And um, how long have you been married, Maureen? 27 years. Wow. Yeah, 27 years. And so um, things became when he knew that I knew and I was going to act on it. I mean, the threats came, the, it, it was, it was a dangerous, actually a dangerous situation for me. Uh, but I, I knew I could escape. Uh, of course, I didn't realize then when you're dealing with an abuser, they don't let you go easily. It doesn't matter if you're divorced or they're remarried or they're, you know, they move on in their lives and you move on. They still stalk you and harass you. They want that power over you. They, right, right. And then when they realize they don't have it, it's, it's, um, they, they, they don't give up easily. But anyway, when I, when I had, when I realized, okay, it was bad enough that I realized, okay, our house that was, I was told was paid off for 10 years. That was in foreclosure. All my money was depleted. I mean, it was just, I, even the, ch even our kids college funds were, were stolen and I mean, oh just my God. unbelievable things such were happening. Such abuse, such a betrayal of violence. Oh, I mean, so many things. I, I mean, I, I am so many things. It is pretty much un, un, unbelievable. But when I realized, okay, I, I needed to get out. And so I had a garage sale and at this garage sale, you know, even though it's a spiritual fiction that I wrote this book, God came to my garage sale. Um, I did actually experience a lot of miracles that just can't be explained by everyday, you know, evidence, facts. And, and then after experiencing some Wait, of these were you miracles, skeptical when these things were starting or had you started to open to them? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I was like, boy, this is unbelievable. Did I really see what I saw? Did this really happen? But then afterwards, I realized um, 
I had like a sense of calm and peace come over me, even in the midst of all this chaos and loss and shock and betrayal. I just still felt loved and and just by God or by something bigger than than what was on earth here. And then, of course, I I went back and thought about numerous things throughout my life, and I put connected the dots and realized that there there is something more. There's miracles. And then when you experience these kinds of things, it was basically a spiritual awakening. Um, you you want to research and you want to learn more and you, you listen to, to people and you read books and that kind of thing. But it wasn't until really the, a little bit after that, that I lost a child. I lost an adult child to parental alienation someone I was close with and loved and laughed with. And um, so please first define parental alienation for people who don't know what that is. Sure. That was a new term for me too. I knew what it was, but I didn't know that that is the term for it. And so I'd love you to tell people um, how to pay attention to the red flags that are flying. Oh my gosh. There's, there's so many red flags, but the thing is usually when you figure out that you have been smeared and betrayed and stolen from and lied to lots of times it's it's that has been in the works for years and years and years you just didn't pay attention to it Um, but all of a sudden when you get a divorce and not one person in a neighborhood that you were close with for 20 plus years talks to you even your handyman all of a sudden that you know, stops talking to you. And I mean, it's, it's like you, you start to realize, okay, luckily I was secure in, in myself as a person that I didn't uh, go seeking out and questioning what's going on and this and that. I kind of knew that my ex had, had already been sort of setting the groundwork for things, but getting back to your question about parental alienation. um, So parental alienation happens to both men and women. And usually it's in a separation or a divorce situation, but it's when one parent um, is so wants to get revenge, is very vindictive and angry and wants to destroy that other parent so much so that they will actually go so far as to murder them. I mean, and that happens all the time or they'll murder the children because they don't want the the other spouse to have custody or something like that. Those those stories are all too real, but it's a campaign of denigration that's been in the works for years and years and years. Um, It doesn't just happen when you get a divorce or separation, but that's when um, everything falls into place for these alienators. So basically it's when you have a loving, normal range relationship with your child and all of a sudden it's severed they want nothing to do with you they believe outlandish lies um like outlandish or they'll believe half truths like they'll say oh you know your parent is mentally ill they went to a a doctor for this and they're on medication when really you know no i might have gone to go get stitches to the hospital and yeah i might have had an antibiotic I took for those. So I wouldn't get an infection from that cut, but you know, they twist the stories around and they somehow get people to believe them. They get, they get well, everyone. Dealing believe. with children, they have no life experience to compare right, with. Right, and they're right. believing their parent. But I mean, and they're so conflicted because they don't want to be disloyal right. to that parent. And they, they love you, but they're being told these terrible things. I well, in this case, this adult child of mine was 20 years old when it happened. So that child had so much experience with me knowing the, actually, they probably know the difference between the two parents and that there was a lot of evil and wrongdoing and, and, you know, stuff happening with the other parent. You know, the thing is with parental alienation, they know the loving parent, which I believe in this case is me, they believe that that's unconditional love. So they don't have to worry about whether yeah. we will be there or You're not. You're the safe there. one. You're the safe one. I'm the safe one. But they, 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 it's kind of like a Stockholm syndrome. You know, that, remember that, that, 
that bank robbery situation where the the tellers who were you know abused and forced at gunpoint and all that they sided with the abusers they were empathetic to the plight of the of the robbers and took their side it's the same kind of thing these young children or in my case adult child they don't they they don't want the same treatment happening to them so they just align you know there's a lot of research out there just i would recommend any of your listeners or viewers to look up parental alienation there are many experts in the field that talk about it it, it basically follows the same playbook no matter what the situation is they they align with the parent that is abusive and they stop all communication with the parent and their extended family. I mean, just uh, they cut off everyone. Oh, I've seen both of those things happen. Right, right. And so it's very sad. And I do understand, uh, you know, to me, that was one of the biggest losses. So that, you know, I can lose my house. I can lose all my money. Well, that was the best way for him to hurt you. Yeah, that was, that was really, you know, very painful. And I don't know that he thought I could recover from that. Um, and, and, you know, abusers are conniving. They try all different angles to kind of bring you down, but it, it didn't really happen for me. In fact, I, in some ways I have to thank him because I am living such a beautiful life. I, I, I'm in the career. So he empowered you. You know, in many ways you do, you do realize what's important in life and, and you get stronger in your convictions. And, yeah. and I was always someone who believed in honesty and goodness and love and compassion. And I'm more so now with that. Um, I don't wish ill will on anyone. I wish healing for some people. I sure wish uh, people that lie and deceit and are evildoers, you know, I wish that that I don't wish revenge for them, but I sh I sure wish that they would leave the the good people alone and just I agree. Maybe, maybe you know heal themselves somehow so they could move on and and stop obsessing and stop over passing us. the legacy of pain forward. Right, right, yeah. These children are you know have a lot they're going to need to struggle with, and it's it's certainly was not what I ever imagined I'd be dealing with, but that's what it is. What you it know? is. So how do people what how do people pay attention to the red flags of domestic abuse? And then you've got some tips for surviving domestic violence. You want to pass them along? Sure. I would say, you know, as far as the red flags, many of us realize something just doesn't seem right. You know, it's like, God, that's really, really strange that this person is involved in our, you know, marriage and and why is this person here or, you know, why is he hiding money or does he, um, I mean, it, it, the stories with people that survive domestic violence run the gamut. I mean, there are abusers that have families with other people while they are married to their main, you know, what you think is the only family, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable, the story. So I would say one thing that I didn't do, and I wish I would have, was just pay attention to my gut and my instincts because I was being told over and over, this does not add up. You know, this is not right. You know, you should not be in the situation. And I, I ignored that. So, so they always say you people ignore the red flags. I would say when you are feeling there's something is not adding up, follow your gut and stop what you're doing and take time to sort of investigate um, why these things don't add up. And, and as far as surviving it, I think, you know, there are all stages to it, just like there are stages to grief, there are stages to surviving. And part of it is, you know, you have to look out for your safety and well being and the safety of your children. That's number one. You know, everyone has their own unique situation. Um, you have to remain vigilant. You have to realize, probably, I would say the best advice is complete no contact because any engaging in any kind of negotiation or communication with your abuser um, 
will not turn out in your favor at all. They may come across as sincere, but, th but they're not. They're not, you know, if they've abused you and they've done such terrible things, they're not going to automatically stop that and come around and like you can negotiate and work with them. And, you know, um, so it's I would like say the old expression when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Right, right. And and abusers actually do tell you it's like a mask falls. Um, I had a best friend that I've been completely betrayed from. Um, or with and and that was someone I was you mentioned the word trauma bonding I was trauma bonded to this best friend but tell know, us about had, trauma bonding because people well, she, have never trauma bonding is where you you have this connection with another person but it is um they've it's dependent on uh history and it's dependent on oh I've known this person my whole life or this person was here during this time and bailed me out or I told this secret to this person you know when we were kids and and you know that you just um trauma bonding can happen in all types of relationships and it definitely was here with this loss of this best friend and that that happened you know, I, I would say after the divorce and after the alienation, when I really realized that that she was very much involved in a lot of betrayal, like unthinkable betrayal and lies. And when when someone lies to you, um, pay attention because they that means they've lied many other times and and this person is a very dishonest person and and i knew that with her interactions with other people but i didn't put it that that would be part of our relationship you didn't figure out when so someone shows you who they are right right <laughs> so that was a red i mean i should have known years ago when right. she was involved in some very unethical you know, behaviors and our, our, our values did not line up years ago. And I should have realized then that, you know, well, wait a minute, these are pretty significant that our values don't line up. So, so anyway, the betrayal, you know, I mean, that loss in some ways was, was harder um, than, than leaving an abusive marriage because, you know, you really thought someone was close to you, but, but they, 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 their mask falls off. So, so she one day without really knowing it said something where I finally listened and I'm stopped sure. and went, wow. And I didn't even, I was careful not to let her know. You're I knew her. what was going on because I needed to exit in a way that was safe. And, and my ex-husband did the exact same thing. He didn't mean to confess some pretty wrongdoings that night over pizza, but it just came out. And, and I finally listened. It was like, boom, a light bulb finally goes on. So I just think, unfortunately, human nature, we, we, we become enlightened and, and accepting of things when we're ready to be enlightened or accepting, you, well, know? you know? Yeah, I agree with you, Marnie. So let me ask you a question. So someone is listening to us Sure. And they have toxic people in their life. Yeah. So how can they let go of these toxic people so that positive situations and honest people can come into their lives? Because you obviously had, how did you let go of her? How do you, to stay safe, to make space right. for better quality people to come into your life? Well, in my case, I, I had some um, loose end business situation that needed to kind of wrap up and... So I, I didn't um, really let on that, that I no longer wanted this person in my life ever. The betrayal was so bad, I, I never wanted, but I, I chose not to have that closure and to, to be reasonable and say, hey, this is the reason, you know, maybe we can work on this or whatever. I just knew and that that was it, uh, that I wanted nothing to do with this person. Our values were so very different. And, um, in, and so I, I just think that you, you have to follow your gut feeling, um, but you also have to just think about who you are and what your values are. 
And, and so I really took time to really think about who am I and, and what do I stand for? And if I allow some of these people that I don't have much respect for, you know, and I didn't have a lot of respect for her in many ways for years, but you know, I still trauma bond. It was, you know, a, long time, it was a long time affection. Right, right. Definitely, definitely. Um, but you have to kind of search within yourself, I think, to find your own values and, and my values of love, honesty, compassion, goodness, honesty being a very big one. I needed to stay true to that. So then I decided, you know, hey, I've might have, I've already lost so many things. I lost so many friends and neighbors and material possessions and all that. And it was, it, you know, I'd already experienced so many losses and then losing my child. Um, you know, I already had kind of lost almost everything. Um, but you hadn't lost yourself. You were fine. But I didn't yourself. lose myself. And, and, and I had no idea that within a relatively short period of time, I would not only regain my, myself back, I'd have beautiful people come into my life that I would connect with, that we would resonate with, that we, we've gone through similar experiences. There's kind of a different type of bond with people who have survived um, grief and loss and then had a rebirth. Right. You know, there we go. You, there yeah. we go. Yeah. So how did your spiritual beliefs, how did embracing spirituality help you to survive what you went through? And how, and did mediums help you on your journey to healing? Most definitely. Most so and of course, exciting story. psychic mediums. I never even believed in psychic mediums. And, and now I'm, I, I'm actually a contributing author to a book that's on your website called The Last Breath. I'm a, a, one of the authors in that book. Um, and it's mostly mediums, but, um, you know, the spiritual awakening, um, how did it help me? It helped me realize that there's more to this earth, that we, we go through some of these trials and tribulations for a reason that I really believe now after researching, experiencing things myself and researching hundreds of other people that have had near-death experiences or spiritual awakening experiences that we, we, we choose this life. We choose our parents, our families, our situations. Isn't that shocking? It is very <laughs> shocking, but I believe it now Yeah. Um, that we go through, you know, and, and while you're going through it, you're thinking, why would I sign up for so much pain? The pain is of losing someone is just, you know, unbearable, um, you know, and, but there's a reason for all of that. And psychic mediums, I, I actually went to a grief workshop. Um, Terry Daniel. Oh, actually, Terry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Terry runs the afterlife conference mm -hmm. and she was in the Chicago area where I was. And my friend who is now my life partner had lost um, his love interest, his friend, um, to cancer. And I was a big part of their relationship and just there as a support to both of them. And, and so we, and I had gone through losing everything. So, um, you know, I just, it was a natural fit to spend time, um, with together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To spend time together. So we went to a grief workshop and the um, afterlife conference, right? We, well, well, we didn't. This one was actually just a grief workshop in the Chicago area, um, and and there was a psychic medium that was there afterwards doing readings with a, a large group of 200, 300 people, and we thought, okay, let's just stay for this. I was one of the five called on, and this psychic medium was able to tell me names and specifics of an aunt that just had passed away um, very much. The details were never, this just happened. So details weren't published anywhere, names weren't published. He didn't know that I was even, I didn't even plan on, I didn't even sign up for that. But uh, it was unbelievable the messages that I got. So then Rick and I decided to attend a workshop the following day at the Infinity Center which is in the North Shore suburbs of Chicago. 
And even in that workshop, um, that same psychic medium was able to tell me exactly how my brother passed away, what his name was, uh, things that he would not have known. But it wasn't just that. There were people that were in attendance there that were psychic mediums, just wanting to hone their craft or whatever. This is like before I even really believed in all this. You were getting knocked out. You must have been uh, unbelievable. And this person, this person who was just a participant there, she would, she knew my brother's name. She knew my mom's name. I had actually, in writing this spiritual fiction, God came to my garage sale. I, even though it's a fiction, I, I was inspired by a lot of true events. And I, I wanted to write a little bit about, you know, my brother's experience. And so I chose a name for him the night before that I'm going to change his name, but I also will change some situations. Well, that participant knew that name. She's like, your brother likes this name and, and approves of it. And I'm like, how could this just happen it? last night? How I didn't tell anyone it? about this. So, so this, then that led to many other um, appointments and meetings with psychic mediums and reading, uh, even went on a spiritual cruise or two um, with psychic mediums, just blown away. Of course, there are some people that claim to be psychic mediums that really, I don't know, have it totally. Um, everyone is, you know, has their own way of, of operating with that. But overall, I've been very good. Amazed. Well, I I always say that it's a subject of, dis it's about discernment because like in any part of life, you have people who are in business, who are not honorable, who, who are, are frauds you have in any world. So you have it in this world too. You just need to discern and right. need to come through someone who you trust and someone and you need to discern who's real. Right. Um, I want you to tell us all about God came to my garage sale. Tell us about what you would like our, our listeners to know about your book and how is that questioning atheist woman who experiences numerous spiritually transformative encounters based on you and your own life experiences? I have a sneaking suspicion that she's very based on you. Well, very much inspired by me because, but it is a spiritual fiction. So, um, but I did pick out major events that have happened to me that um, were life-changing. And I went on to talk about them, but of course there are, there's some embellishment just to, to make it, you know, more of a believable story. But, um, but it's, it's, I, it's filled with spiritual information that people definitely. really glean a lot of spiritual wisdom from it. Definitely. And this is the book. Um, it's, oh, it's called, wonderful. And it's award winning everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's called God came to my garage sale. Actually, it was endorsed by James Redfield, who wrote the Which is amazing. Celestine. All by yeah. himself. That that in itself was pretty amazing. He wrote the Celestine prophecy, but yeah. and 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 was very interested, not at first, but after reading my manuscript, said, Wow, you know, I would like to. To support you in this and and i do have other famous psychic mediums that um uh, one one psychic medium is from michigan and she she is just out of this world i mean just i i couldn't believe the things that she could come up with and another you know a couple of them are celebrity psychic mediums that were um that that really know their stuff and um anyway so so the book you know i was inspired because at this garage sale and then many other experiences through the year or two after that garage sale um where i really i i i it was more than just finding pennies and feathers and seeing red cardinals and it was it was seeing people um that seemed to come for a reason and then would just and then would just disappear without me seeing them leave or I had even my first chapter is about dragonflies. At one point I was surrounded by, you know, what seemed a hundred dragonflies circling me and everything was in slow motion. And, and the feeling that I had was that I was being surrounded by generations of ancestors and, and just, I was given such a feeling of 
of just peace. You're, you're, yep, you're supported. Well, doesn't the dragonfly also stand for transformation also? Well, the dragonfly, and I write about this in my book, stands for all sorts of things with regards to different cultures and and they but but overall it definitely is transformational just like butterflies would be transformational but um but yeah i just had a lot of amazing experiences and and i have since gone on to have numerous spiritual experiences almost on a daily basis wow. that, that I have now that, that, it, you know, it's almost like I can manifest some things where I, if That's I really, fantastic. if I put my intention, you know, if I really, really focus and I, I meditate and I, uh, you know, follow some rituals and things that really kind of bring me to a, a sense of peace and calm, um, I can ask for some divine guidance and, and I can, get it it's it's amazing I what a blessing and, and sometimes you don't know how it's going to come into your life whether it's a person you meet a situation you're in but I have just been amazed and and just like you you know you've you've survived such loss in your life on many different levels I too have survived loss on many levels and for many people they might not be able to go on you know, with such severe loss, but I, I've always um, felt good about going on. You know, I've, I was never suicidal. I was never depressed. I was never, I, I just always knew there was good, that goodness would prevail somehow. Justice doesn't always prevail, but goodness does. And, and so I'm able to go on. You know what? I wish for you, Marnie, that justice will also prevail. Well, it might, it might, hopefully, hopefully we'll oh. see, but you know what? I, I haven't had that experience. Unfortunately, abusers can, can, you Do know, remember. a lot of, a lot of people believe lies. And even if they're right in front of your face, you know, false documentation, all that is, it, it's, it's mind blowing, but whatever, I can still live with myself and who I am and what I'm all about, Good for you. you know? You so can't control people. other people. You can't control. Women. No, the part of that's letting go. Cause what, yeah. can, you do? what yeah. can you do? Otherwise they eat you up. Right. What you're such a good role model for rebirth after trauma. Ah. What is your, what is your message about the importance of healing that you'd like to share with our listeners and how is the best way for them to connect with you and purchase God came to my garage sale. Oh, okay. Well, let's see, as far as healing, I think part of it is just searching within yourself to your own values and who you are and staying true to that. I think another thing for healing, in my case, a change of scenery really helped. So I moved from Chicago to the beautiful Caribbean. So that has been amazing. I've lived here two years and I'm so glad that I had a change of scenery. That really helped me. Although I always had plans to stay in our marital home and, you know, create a life there, but that wasn't meant to be. And, you know, thank goodness I have found a much better existence, you know, where I am. Both and new friends waiting for you. Definitely. For def and, yeah. and I think another thing is, you know, evaluate what you're interested in, your hobbies, you know, what you, how you like to spend your time. I found that, you know, um, like, for example, I used to always love to cook and I, I love to, you know, bake and make things and my children and I would make cream brulees and we would just, you know, and I would do so much for every holiday, you know, no matter what the holiday was, I would decorate and we would do all sorts of art projects and stuff. Well, that really changed. I don't, um, do, I don't do holidays like that. Um, and I'm open to other kinds of holidays. Uh, my life partner is Jewish and somehow always in my heart and soul, I felt I was Jewish. And I always said that, um, even you probably to, had a past life. I might, I'm sure I had a past life, but you know, so I'm learning, I'm open to new, new experiences. Um, and I don't, I don't really cook much anymore because the person I am with is an, is a major cook and, and, and creates all sorts of wonderful um, 
meals for us. Oh my so, God, he sounds perfect. Oh, he's, he's well, he's <laughs> just a good person in so many ways. And he could. I mean, uh, well, he, true to the value. I mean, honesty is a big thing. And, and so it's after years of being with such dishonest people in my life, not just my ex-husband, but my best friend and, and definitely a lot of dishonest neighbors and people that I surrounded myself with to spend my life with someone who is honest and fun and interesting. And I learned so much from, I just, it's, it's just uh, amazing. That's it's just amazing. In, in miracle that came into your life. You found yourself. Definitely. Different. Definitely. And, um, and so let's see, as far as my book, um, God came to my garage sale. It is um, on Amazon, Barnes and Noble. It was published by Balboa Press, which is a division of Hay House. Uh, the book's only $11, $11.99 or $3 for an ebook, so it's very reasonable. It can be found in many bookstores, even in the States, different books. Uh, I, I'm getting um, contacted to come do book signings and to go different places, and, and so it's, it's out there. I also, uh, this past couple of years, contributed, I'm a co-author, to four other best-selling books. Wow. Um, one I mentioned that's on your website is The Last Breath. So I contributed a chapter there. Um, I'm also involved with Blue Talks, which stands, Blue stands for Business, Life, and Universe. And this fall, I'll be going to Columbia University in New York City speaking on surviving um, domestic violence, narcissist abuse, and parental alienation, but handling um handling these life challenges with love and goodness That's and so also talking about how spirituality plays a role in that as well um so and i was also in a dog book which was a lot of fun i actually wrote um a chapter called doggy divorce from a dog's perspective so it actually touches on alienation it's someone else's story um, but I was, I had the honor of writing that. And then I was also in a book called the evolution of echo, um, where I wrote also from a different perspective, from the abuser's point of view. Wow. Uh, yeah. So challenging. Well, it was, it, it wasn't that hard because I, you, 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 when you start to try to put the pieces together and understand what happened to you, you almost have to try to understand the mindset of, of an abuser, you know, of a, of someone who's malevolent. And, and, and so I, I, it was very healing to write this, this essay, be, you know, from that perspective, uh, because I really, I don't feel like I'm a victim. I was a victim. Um, you know, unfortunately, anyone that is, targeted by an abuser is a victim, but I certainly don't live in that victim mentality. At Not all. at all. Just, no, no. Not at all, Marnie. No. What, so, what, and then I also, yeah, um, go ahead. well, I'm, I'm, I just finished writing another book last week. I've been working on it for three years. And so I actually have a series of four books. Uh, the main title is True Deceit, False Love. And uh, this particular book is a book of terms. And I also have poetry books in the works. So anyway, I've been, uh, so I think in answering the, that other question is how do you survive this? I think you think of your interests and you pursue them. I, I really could very easily retire to the Caribbean and, and not do much each day, but I really find a lot of healing and joy in writing. So, so, you so found I write your a lot. So everyone needs to find that magic key for themselves. Right, find right? what works for you, you know, Would what you, you enjoy. That's right. Would you say that is a tip for finding joy in life is to find what you enjoy? Find what you like to do, whether it's a craft, whether it is um, volunteering for an organization that you feel strongly about, whether it's traveling and seeing the world and, and other experiences, taking up a completely new hobby. Um, I, I was always said, I was told by a lot of people, oh, you're going to take up scuba diving because you're in the Caribbean. Well, no, no, I don't want to be <laughs> not interested. I love to snorkel and I'll snorkel every day, but you know, no, I don't want to put on a big heavy tank and, you know, um, feel constricted like that. But people do pick up hobbies that they never thought that they would. 
Um, you know, uh, we spend a lot of time skiing, even though I'm in the Caribbean, we will, you know, go to where there's beautiful mountains and, and, and ski. And that's something I wasn't really involved in for many years, but now I really enjoy it. I can certainly relate to that. Where do you go to ski? Well, I, you know, I love Alta. I've been to, Oh, I've been to Alta. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, we have a, a great time in Utah and, um, even Minnesota, we spent some time skiing in Minnesota and Colorado. And uh, so it's just kind of fun to try different places to ski. Oh, and it's beautiful. But it's finding, finding something you're interesting that, that is interesting to you and, and doing it, picking up a hobby that was something that, you know, like I just, I just had an interview with an amazing woman, uh, Rusty McDonald, who is a survivor herself. And she picked up painting. She loves to paint now and finds a lot of, you know, therapeutic value in that. So, you know, you just have to find what works find for what you. Find what works for you. Marnie, you are terrific. You're a true role model for oh, grief thanks. and rebirth. You really are. This has been a pleasure interviewing you. You survived traumatic domestic abuse and parental alienation by embracing spirituality. And today you are thriving. In addition, your book, God Came to My Garage Sale, beautifully illustrates that paying attention to the universe's signs, synchronicities, and spiritually transformative experiences can transform lives. Definitely. I highly recommend it. Thank you from my heart. Oh, well, thank you, you know, and, and thank you for having the podcast, just like you were called to handle your grief, probably through speaking with others like this and, and connecting with other people and giving a platform to, to people to, to share and communicate. And I think our voices matter. We we need to speak out, you know, no one is slandering anyone or saying anything negative. We're speaking our truth and we're, we're connecting with, with others so that they could maybe realize, Hey, maybe I can survive what I'm going through too. If they can learn from our experiences and not struggle as much, what a blessing. Right. Right. Right? And yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And here's a reminder, everyone to see the show notes and all Grief and Rebirth podcast episodes on IreneWeinberg.com. And make sure to follow us and like us on social at, at Irene S. Weinberg on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. As I like to say, to be continued, many blessings and bye for now.